Mary's a chef at McSorley's Old Ale House, the oldest saloon in New York City that's been serving up Irish fare to customers throughout the years, from Abe Lincoln to John Lennon. Today, she's going to show us how to make the traditional shepherd's pie. Mary, thank you so much for having us here. This is so exciting. This is You're for you. You're very welcome. Thank Parsley you very much. Parsley and for your kitchen from us. Very nice. So now, my grandparents and great-grandparents actually came right. from, um, um, from Ireland, but I don't know anything about Irish food, so right. I need to learn. <laughs> Irish food is very simple. Everybody at meat and potatoes. Meat and potatoes. That was it. Today, we are going to do a shepherd's pie. Okay. Just to let people see. What are the main ingredients in a shepherd's have, pie? Um, Ground beef, okay. carrots, onions, a little Worcestershire, and a little tomato puree, okay. and a little stock. And a little that's stock. It. And that this and is beef then, stock? Yeah. That's put into our dish and covered with a layer of potatoes. A layer potatoes. of mashed potatoes. Right. All and right. cooked in the oven. And this is a totally traditional Irish meal. This is one of them. Do you usually eat bigger dinners or bigger lunches in Ireland? Well, we don't call it lunch oh. to start with. Okay. <laughs> Everybody, years ago, now of course times have changed with economics, you know, but years ago we used to have our dinner during the day. So that was more, I'm dinner to, is more like your lunch. Right. Okay. Because then, they wanted to have the biggest meal during the day. For sustenance for a hard day on right. the field. Right. Plus it was better for them, yes. They were working all day, so, you know, they needed good, hearty meals, you know. And so uh, they started with, you know, had a good breakfast in the morning, usually porridge. Porridge. And then they came on and uh, they had a good meal during the day. And after that then, in the evening, they had something lighter, like a salad in the, in the summertime, or maybe a toasted sandwich and some soup um, in the wintertime. Gotcha. You know, it was a, it's completely different to over here, where everybody kind of had this huge meal in the evening. Ireland, everybody had it between noon and two o'clock. Now, it seems like a lot of the ingredients here are extremely simple. Yes. Potatoes, meat, some tomato paste or, right. or something like that. Worcestershire, And, it, sure. and it, yeah. se it seems like that comes from a bit of like a, like a peasant right. stock. Right. Where you're not very fancy with elaborate sauces right. or exotic spices. Right, that's just a little salt and pepper. A little salt and pepper. Right. Is that all coming back? I mean, a lot of people in America have heard about the Great Potato Famine back in the 1800s. Has that really had a huge impact on yes. what Irish cuisine yes. has become? Because it was easier to get a little um, ground beef than it was, you know, you could always pick it up. It was cheaper cut of meat. Um, it was easier to pick up, easier to cook. You didn't use economically enough, you know, even though Everybody cooked over an open fire anyhow. Mm. They all had their open fires with their big pots. They cooked their stews or their shepherd's pie or their meat and stew meat like brisket or something all day. And they made the bread on top of it. Right there on top. A, there was a flat lid and the bread was put on top of it like a stone, you know. And what has changed, would you say, from having, you know, the meat and potatoes basics to Irish cuisine today? Has, has, well, nowadays it it's more fusion, I suppose. Fusion. People are more, are better trained. They're going for training. Um, it's recognized more, in, I suppose, with tourism and people come and going throughout the world. It's opening up to up. different flavors. Exactly. And I know. In my picking up to different ideas around the world, you know. Plus, with the start of the Celtic Tiger, which was the boom of the economics in Ireland in the 90s. It's amazing how it's turned around, the economy. Yes. We have a lot of emigration. We never had emigration. People you know? coming into Ireland. Right. It's like and the tide is turned. In, exactly. And they're bringing in their traditions, their cultures, their food. Yeah. So this, now we're just browning the beef? Is that what we're doing? Right. And I added the carrots and the uh, onions. How long do you have to have this cooking? Until it's the meat is brown through. Okay. Um, more or less, the whole dish is more or less made on top of the stove. To put it into the oven is to brown it. Oh, that's more the final stage. Yeah. So now we're going to add... I'm adding in the, uh, the Worcestershire and the tomato puree. Okay. This that's gives it a little flavor. flavor. Yeah. yeah. 
these are the main seasoning ingredients in cooking. Right, in the cooking. we don't use a lot of seasoning in Ireland. It's so funny because neither does my mom. Yeah. <laughs> Until so now, I got older and we started yeah. going to restaurants, yeah. it was salt and pepper. Yes. And that ketchup. Was it. And yeah. lots of ketchup. Yeah. <laughs> and Worcestershire sauce and stuff like that. You know, it was easy kind of stuff. Yeah. So this is beef stock. Right. And this is just to give it a little bit of moisture and right. more flavor. Right. Right. Okay. And so most of this is all done on the stove. You assemble and then you assemble it and then we stick it in the oven. Right. This is just like your typical Irish shepherd's pie right. and then what's the next step step after this what the happens? next step is to put it in here okay should we go ahead and do that sure okay just sort of get that all in I'll turn this off and then how long does something like this cook in the oven about 20 minutes you're more or less only brown that you okay. don't really have to cook it much more because everything's already everything assembled is, is, cooked. and is cooked most importantly okay well that looks so, really good yeah. it smells really good too Mary added the rest of the ingredients ground meat tomato puree and beef stock and she transferred it all into the casserole dish and then my favorite part the mashed potato topper and now that just gets put as that a just layer puts just right on top as a layer okay yeah Put it here. Bet you've done this before. <laughs> well, once or twice. <laughs> oh, that's cool with the spoon. Well, it's easier with the spoon. See, I would have thought that it would have been um, like a more of like a pie crust. You know, like the kind of pie crust that you put on top of a chicken pot pie or something. Right. That looks really good. Just finished. So that's it now. We put it into the oven and okay. we brown it. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Now I know that we have one that's already been made. Right. So maybe we can take that out just to show you guys all the the browning on the top of the well, potatoes. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, that looks great. You know what? It kind of looks like scalloped potatoes. Yes. <laughs> oh, that looks great. That's the difference now between the two. One is brown and one will be more brown. Oh, that delicious. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. Now, after the break, we're going to come back into the living room and get a little taste of Mary's experiences in Ireland and coming over to America.